I tell you, Larry, uh, portable live streaming is not as easy as it looks. How are you today? Very good, Jason. And yourself? Hmm. You I'm doing well. all right. Thank you. And you are as well. But I'm getting the impression, Larry, that you're running out of patience for these cowardly conservatives. What's on your mind today? Now, the problem is, you know, there's a I always make reference to Woody Allen. He was a brilliant satirist, despite the fact that uh, certain elements, leftist elements of Hollywood are trying to destroy him in the next two weeks, 30 years after the fact. Hmm. I, don't believe, I don't really believe that he did what they said he did. You know, his ex-wife obviously has a, an ax to grind. But that being said, there was a film that he produced. It was called Take the Money and Run, the very first movie he ever did. And there was a scene where, where as a young boy, bullies would come in his direction, take his glasses off, and step on them. And it got so bad, and it happened so many times, and he became so reflexive that when he saw the bullies coming again, he learned to take his own glasses off and step on them. And many conservatives today, and I don't consider these people to be conservative at all, they're profiteers. They're people who tried to make money off of a certain political bent or whatever. They have exited stage left. They're afraid of their shadow. And this cancel culture that is being perpetrated by the left, and that's, that's really too nice a term, cancel culture. It's censorship, it's intimidation, it's extortion, it's whatever you want to call it, is that now certain conservative websites and publications are starting to censor their columnists, their authors, and censor themselves for fear that they're going to be canceled themselves on YouTube or, or wherever. And even employees of these companies are afraid because if they say the wrong thing, they'll be fired. And how do you wage a peaceful and legal revolution when you can't communicate with the American people? And that's why you're so important, Jason. People like you talk radio. I have my own radio show, Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. I do a podcast every morning. You can find it at freedomwatchusa.org. I'm writing books. And my publisher didn't have a problem with what I was writing. But some people do. I've been censored lately, you know, on certain websites and such. And it's, it's unbelievable that people who claim to be conservatives are putting their heads in the sand, thinking that somehow this radical leftist onslaught is going to go away, that they're going to be able to resolve our differences at the ballot box. Forget about that. Doing it at the ballot box is not going to happen, not with the way the electoral system is cooked these days with the fraud that occurs you know, in terms of counting ballots and also the system, which allows for these paper ballots, which is rife with uh, fraud, it's not, not going to happen. And, and for that reason, it's time to talk out. We need patriots. We need brave people that are going to stand up to this radical left. And we don't need people afraid of their shadow. And, and, and that's where it is. You know, and it's, it's, it's pathetic. And, and you had an experience at CPAC last week, which you know, be good for the listeners to and viewers to hear about because CPAC is a total fraud, top to bottom, and it's a bunch of people, self-congratulatory people, pay to play. You want to get an award at CPAC, uh, you want to speak at CPAC, ante up the money. And I'm tired also, even of those people who, who speak, who actually genuinely believe in what they're talking about, and most of them, frankly, don't. People like Matt Schlapp, who are lobbyists who sell pardons for $750,000 based upon his connections to Trump and then don't even deliver, but keep the 750000 You know, this mm. is primarily what you're dealing with. But there are some sincere people that actually show up at these events, but they just talk. And it's time for talk is over. It's time to educate. Educate, but then act. Act. And that's why I think the show is very, very important, Jason, what you're doing. And uh, you allow people to tell the truth and you bring people on who actually do things. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show, Larry, and I appreciate what you're saying. You know, it has gotten to the point where there's certain things we want to discuss that it really is risking the platform to even bring it up. And I mean, you've made your career as a prosecutor and now as uh, even a defense attorney. You're in the business of argumentation where there's a debate, there's two sides. 
and each side gets a fair opportunity to argue their point. We're now in a climate where even questioning certain things gets you just decimated, just totally eradicated from the forum, and you have no voice at all. Well, it, it may be eradicated from certain forums, but it will come out, and we can be very creative, and it will come out. And when they do that, they actually make you stronger because people will pay closer attention to what you're saying. Because if you are being banned or if you are being, you know, doxxed or whatever the case may be, there's got to be a reason for that. And a long time ago, someone who initially helped me with fundraising when I ran a Judicial Watch after I began it, uh, Richard Vigory, who uh, was a fundraiser in the early years for Judicial Watch, would say to me, Larry, you gauge yourself by your enemies. If you don't have any enemies, you're not doing anything, okay? And <laughs> and that's a fact. It's it's quite it's quite a, a wise statement. The more enemies yeah. you have, the more effective you are. Yeah, and you know historically, Larry, when you've come on the show, you've been very vocal about people and things that are trying to obstruct you. I think there are some facts coming to light that are, in my opinion going to vindicate you hopefully in a lot of people's eyes i'm not trying to slam anybody or gossip or whatever but when the facts point to people whatever anybody out there in the youtube universe or the court of public opinion thinks when we find facts and evidence that people are engaging in fraud we've got to expose that we've got to talk about that it's not like i like this guy i don't like that guy i trust jason i don't trust jason or i like larry i don't like larry that's not what it is it's facts evidence and ultimately the proof that's right and, and i appreciate your saying that jason although i don't need to be vindicated uh, no more than uh, god and the father needed to be vindicated you know swimming upstream but it is helpful for people to understand because people swallow a lot of kool-aid so to speak the phrase. That's why in my book, It Takes a Revolution, Forget the Scandal Industry, the subtitle is as important as the primary title, Forget the Scandal Industry. Because what they get on Sean Hannity or on Fox News or on some of these other platforms is a lot of Kool-Aid, self-promoting Kool-Aid. That's what you get mostly at CPAC, self-promoting Kool-Aid. And it lulls people into thinking that something's going to happen happen. I mean, look at Hannity. Every single night, the same monologue, major breaking news, same guests. Most of them do nothing other than just simply talk. We're going to have justice. Well, we don't have any justice. There is no justice. Now even this clown John Durham has quit as U.S. attorney. He hasn't produced anything with regard to what went on in the Russian collusion witch hunt. So that's why, you know, I swim upstream because there's no other way to swim. If you want to go downstream, you're going to drown. You're going to drown <laughs> in, in the corruption of the left and the deceit of many people on the right. And sometimes the people that you think on your, are on your side are the ones that wind up stabbing you in the back and think that you don't know they're doing it. you got to be aware that sometimes the people around you are worse than your enemies because you don't know where they're coming from. And, and yeah. certainly President yeah. Trump learned that, right? He was stabbed in the back by his own Supreme Court justices, his lower court justices, the people that he had in the White House. And frankly, to this day, he hasn't learned the lesson because he continues to think that the Republican Party is the way to go. The Republican Party's dead. It's finished. It's corrupt. It's, it's dishonest. It, it, it promises things that are never going to happen. Oh, we're going to, re, we're going to reform Obamacare. Obamacare now today is bigger than it ever was. We're going to balance the budget. No, we have now $30 trillion in debt. How did you balance the budget even when you controlled the House of Representatives and the Senate and you had the presidency on top of that? The Republican Party is a fraud top to bottom, and people need to know that. And the answer is not electing more Republicans. The answer is forming a new political party by and for the people. And I intend to do that with a separate organization. But Larry, aren't we worried that that's going to kind of fracture the conservative base? And I mean, this is the essential problem, right? We're stuck with this two-party system. That doesn't work. But creating a new thing, it's always so problematic. It almost, I think most people feel like they don't know what what's to do. A, what's it a fracture, J J Jason? And the same argument has been made about having a new constitutional convention. I'm calling for a third Continental Congress, and you're going to be there, you're invited, and you're a great videographer, also a great thinker, and I hope that we can produce it so people will see it, but we're calling in great minds, 
because we need to reenact our constitution with certain changes. For instance, take make make it clear that government officials and judges don't have immunity. They don't have it now, but they claim they do. Take away life tenure from judges. They don't even yeah. have that now. And serve for good behavior. Put in the Constitution discrimination on the basis of political ideology and belief, you know, or, or any ideology and belief. Now it's just race, sex, religion, you know, and ethnicity. So these are the things that we can be doing. We can be forming a new government. Let the criminals in Washington commit crimes against each other. Have fun, guys. You know, let's take the Capitol back to Philadelphia where it all began at Independence Hall. We have a right to do that. That's what it says we can do in our Declaration of Independence when the rulers break away from the American people under the laws of nature and nature's God. We can alter and abolish our government and form a new government by and for the people. These are the things we need to talk about because the Republicans have had their chance. They they controlled all three branches of government. Where are we today? The country is decimated. It's destroyed. It, you know, I mean, even Dr. Seuss now has been put in a gulag. I mean, (laughs) you know, Curious George becomes racist because he happens to be a monkey. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. Let's ban monkeys, okay? (laughs) So... No, you're right, Larry. It's a troubling condition. I mean, frankly, for me, one of the biggest issues is we've got the National Guard. I mean, Washington, D.C., I was there just two weeks ago. We're under martial law. Now there's a report in the New York Post that the National Guard troops who are defending the Capitol became sick because they're eating raw meat. Now, I mean, it's not like they're hunkered down in the hills in Afghanistan. There should be uh, adequate food preparation in the middle of Washington, D.C. It's just razor wire and fences all over the place. I mean, I don't think we would have ever thought the country would get to this just unbelievably bad condition. And it seems like every day, uh, I I can't even bring myself to call the man president, but President Stupid Joe, everything he does, and, and the House of Representatives, if they even represent anybody anymore, Every decision they make is taking us further down this radical leftist, you know, pit. Yeah, exactly. And and what are our conservative colleagues in the media doing? In in particular, except for you and Radio America, where I have a show where I can say what I want to say and and talk radio is free. That's still free. You can say what you want on talk radio. But where are they going? Where are these websites going and others? They're they're bowing down. The cable networks. Fox News, Newsmax, bowing down to the leftists saying, don't hurt me. We will censor ourselves. We'll take our own glasses off and step on them before you get there. Right. Leave us alone, you know? And and this is where we are. And without, uh, you know, real courageous people out there, then this country is going to stay destroyed. As of today, it's destroyed. The country is destroyed in just a month and a half. Biden, with close to 50 executive orders, has destroyed this country, the vision of our founding fathers. It's dead. I think you're absolutely right. We've got to bring it back. Now, about this censorship, Larry, I want to bring up some specific things because you've told me some things that have been going on. We're not going to talk about those websites, but in the case of big tech, you've got Freedom Watch TV on YouTube here, and people can watch the simulcast of the videos that we do together by subscribing. It's totally free. And, you know, you and I have done so many videos, Larry, I always set them up when we're doing them, and I've noticed that you've been locked in at 43.2 thousand subscribers for, I don't know, maybe a year. I find it totally implausible that you wouldn't have added even 100 subscribers in the time that we've done these videos. So there does seem to be some way that, I, I mean, I don't have evidence but it's to support this, but it just seems so obvious. How could the channel not grow at all? Is YouTube stopping people from subscribing to it? Yeah, there's a governor on it. You can't rise. By the way, it's been that way for, I'd say, three to five years. Okay. In fact, in front of the Supreme Court right now, and this is interesting, there's a story out there on World Net, World Net Daily today about it. Supreme Court has now has rescheduled a decision whether to accept certiorari on the antitrust case that I brought for Laura Loomer and me and Freedom Watch three times. Okay. It, it, that must mean that there's some kind of discussion going on up there whether they're going to accept this case, or maybe a judge like Justice Thomas writes something that the Chief Justice doesn't want him to write. I mean, who knows, you know, in dissent. But it's very, very interesting because 
when you're dealing with Larry Klayman and Laura Loomer, you would think that the case would automatically go into the trash up there at, at SCOTUS. But you see, they understand. They understand the gravity of what's going on. And maybe with the grace of God, maybe they'll hear something. Maybe they'll grab it. And there's some very interesting issues in the case, not just antitrust, because what you have here is parallel activity by all these big tech companies working in concert. That's what we allege in an anti-competitive way, because it's anti-competitive. You know, I'm an antitrust lawyer, among other things. I helped break up AT&T as a young lawyer in the Reagan administration, in the, in the Justice Department, when it still was the Department of Justice rather than the Department of Injustice it is today. But when you do things that are not to your economic advantage and you're discriminating, that can give rise to an antitrust violation. But even more interesting than that, the District of Columbia has a law that prevents discrimination on the basis of political speech in a public forum. And the issue is whether or not the Internet is a public forum, because we've had these hack judges on the lower courts, federal courts in Washington, D.C., rule that you actually have to be physically at Farragut Square or McPherson Square, you know, or on Black Lives Matter Square now, that that speech only applies with regard to wow. this district be a statute if you're physically present. Now, in today's world of COVID-19 and in today's world where the Internet is the way you communicate, you even do court hearings now by legal Zoom and, and other means, yeah. how can that be? So the Supreme Court may grab this issue, and if it does, it's got a case that's teed up right now and you can forget about Section 230. You can forget about all other stuff. It doesn't apply. Is it can you discriminate in a public forum and and squelch free speech in violation of a statute that already exists? So it's a very important case. Real quickly, Larry, we've got somebody in the comments asking who the cowardly conservative lion in today's meme is. It's good old Mitch McConnell. Well, he's just <laughs> one of them. He's the head of it. And, uh, you know, they're cowards, but Mitch uh, can also be carrying, you know, a bag of gold, okay, because M Mitch is incredibly corrupt. He even took money from the communist Chinese wanted through his wife, Elaine Chow. Like, you know, we discovered that at Judicial Watch years ago when I was running it. But it's not just Mitch McConnell. It's, it, it's all of them. Can you name one Republican that has any guts other than shoots his mouth off, including Jim Jordan and others? All they do is shoot their mouth off. That's all. They get on hand and he raise money, you know, gets, goes on there without a coat and tie. You know, looks like he's cool, like he's really working. You know, he's ex-wrestling coach at Ohio State. You know, it, it's bullshit, okay? And people know it's bullshit now. So that's what I'm talking about, the Republican Party. It's dead. Forget about it. Stick a fork in it. It's gone. Hmm. It has done, it has done well, nothing for us. I, let me ask you this, because I think there are some who are trying. I mean, Ron DeSantis recently gave a press conference. He was talking about some, that's not him right there. He was talking about some legislation on the state level that he hopes will uh, force big tech that wants to do business in the state of Florida to have to abide a bit more by due process in terms of not being able to remove people without cause and maybe having an appeal process. Have you looked into this at all, what DeSantis is proposing? And do you think this is going to be helpful? I, I, I like uh, Governor DeSantis. I mean, he's an exception. I agree. But his legislation is worthless, i got to be honest. To find, to find big tech $100,000 a day is less than a penny in our pocket. It's not going to do anything hmm. if it gets through the Florida legislature. Okay? It's, it's, wow. it's, uh, it's smoke and mirrors. But, yeah, I think his heart is in the right direction. And I think when you're, you're a governor, yeah, you do have some authority in a state that is, you know, has a legislature that isn't run by the Democrats. But, and Florida is better than 99% of the other states. I'm proud to be a Floridian, you know, I really am. It's one of the few places that you still have some liberty, but uh, that's not enough. I mean, that's not gonna save this country. Yeah, and I don't wanna take us too far off topic, but while we're talking about governors, I don't think we can uh, have a conversation without discussing perhaps the most reprehensible guy in the country, Andrew Cuomo yesterday gave another one of his, uh, he should get an Emmy for the rudest jackass in a press conference ever. He made people uncomfortable and he's sorry, but he didn't address uh, killing any of the elderly at all. And, well, that's what's um, important, Jason, and, and watch what we do, because 
I have a client right now. We're going to bring a case against Governor Cuomo and nursing homes that are responsible. Uh, and yes, Governor Cuomo is a despicable human being. There's no doubt about it. Arrogant, uh, a bully, as people say. But I have to say one other point. This is interesting. Is that this thing about all his sexual harassment stuff, okay? Frankly, I'm sorry, I don't buy it. I just don't. And What do you mean? You know, per oh, periodically the left has to find somebody, some white male that they've got to lynch on the, on a, on the stake, okay? And, you know, I have a client... Uh, Laurie Loon, you know, who we sued Fox News, she was severely abused by Roger Ailes. And she said to me, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying this, is that, you know, what happened to me was sexual harassment. OK, um, this isn't sexual harassment. But look, they're trying to lynch him. The Democrat Party wants him out, too, because he's Wait, sorry, a huge Sorry, restate that, Larry. So Laurie Loon's opinion was that the uh, the she, Andrew she, Cuomo she, stuff look, doesn't look, stack up. She looked at the indignation of what was going on with regard to Cuomo and said, look, this is nothing compared to what happened to me with right. Ailes, you know, and what's happening. But the, the reality is this. Yes, sexual harassment is wrong. I've, I have represented sexual harassment victims. I believe, you know, in, in not uh, harassing women or anybody else, men included. But this leftist pack of wolves, uh, from time to time, they run out of white males that they can lynch, okay? And they have to come up with a new one, you know, and... and I just don't buy what's happening with regard to Cuomo in that regard. I really don't. No, I'm, I hear you. I think a lot of people agree that this is, uh, obviously he's a jerk and he is making women uncomfortable, but it's a far cry from the type of stuff that Roger Rails was doing with actual sexual assault. And uh, they're just basically making this the biggest issue with Cuomo while no one is talking about the real issue of destroying New York's economy, destroying lives in New York's Killing elder care thousands homes. thousands of people. Killing thousands. Thousands of people. That's the issue right now. Yeah. So I'm not but saying he's, to be I'm totally not saying he's the... innocent, Jason. I'm not saying he's innocent. I just am skeptical because from time to time, they got to find the white male to lynch. You got to do it. You run at him, you come up with a new one. And he announced last night that he's not resigning. So it's almost like case closed on that. It seems like it's going to blow over in a couple days and he'll be back to making Q-tip jokes with his stupid brother on CNN. Well, they are pretty stupid. I told you years ago, this is funny, when I was friendly with, with Roger Ailes in the beginning of Judicial Watch, I walked into his office one day. I could walk in any time during those years. It was before we knew he was a sexual abuser and whatever. And there was Chris Cuomo on the monitor above his secretary's desk and uh, as a contributor to Fox News. And I walk in and I said, Roger, why is Chris Cuomo uh, a commentator on Fox News? Excuse the French. He says, if I'm going to have some goddamn liberal on Fox News, I'm going to get the dimmest, dumbest F I, F I can find. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a so petition he did have a, afoot. He did have a sense of humor. He did have a sense of humor. Yeah. And there's a petition afoot to actually remove uh, Mario Cuomo's name. I think they recently renamed the Tappan Z Bridge as a Mario Cuomo Bridge. And I think that uh, Andrew Cuomo's just totally despicable behavior and the way he's destroyed New York is uh, ruining the Cuomo family legacy. There's also, it's he's totally smeared the name of the Emmys. I, I see almost everybody who talks badly about Andrew Cuomo brings up the point that he was awarded an Emmy. Crowdsource the Truth viewers know that I'm being sued by the Emmys. And I mean, frankly, this is one of the things I was criticizing them for. You can't be giving Emmys to politicians, particularly not those who have some of the highest death numbers in their states. It's absolutely ridiculous. Well, this is a good, this is a good lesson in, in certain things, too. Because, you see, the Cuomo dad, Mario, and the brothers, Chris and Andrew, they're very articulate people. Okay, they speak extremely well. Of course, the, the father's dead, so he's not speaking right now, at least on this earth. And people get taken in by that. And people that I know, even that are close to me, when they first listened to Mario Cuomo, uh, excuse me, uh, Andrew Cuomo, when the COVID-19 crisis hit, said, my God, this guy's really bright. He's really right. in charge. He knows what he's doing, right? Maybe he could be president. Maybe I might even vote for him as a Democrat, even though I'm a Republican. Okay. Wow. Well, it's the old story. You can't judge a book by his cover. OK, and that's what you go through when you listen to speakers at CPAC or you listen to these Republican hacks to come on Hannity or Fox News or whatever. You get taken in, you get drawn in 
You said, gee, they're really doing something. They would, they know what they're doing. But then look around where we are today. What have they done other than allow this country to, to be destroyed? What have they done? What have the Republicans done? Nothing. Uh, right, nothing. Well, so let's take the conversation back to CPAC, Larry, because I know you, uh, we spoke that you had seen the video that Charles and I did yesterday about some of this really stunning information that we've uncovered, frankly, by accident, as a result of CPAC kicking me out. They had their Uncancel America event last week in Orlando, and they canceled me from it. It's interesting. I saw some of the different YouTubers that they did allow in there. I still don't know why they wouldn't allow me in there, but there's been this big controversy with this uh, Nazi symbol designed into the stage. What do you make of any of that? Where is the Nazi symbol? I didn't actually notice it at the time. Um, it was a Nazi, let me see here, CPAC Nazi stage. It, uh, it was a whole big dust up where they're saying that it was, you know, designed to look like a Nazi ruin symbol or something like that. This is the Nazi symbol right here. And the stage was designed by some, uh, you know, uh, liberal design company. And it's just created this whole fervor that really kind of makes Donald Trump and his supporters look bad because they're saying this stage is designed to look like this Nazi symbol. Whether it was or wasn't, this is what's in the news. And the thought that crosses my mind is why would CPAC not hire a conservative a design company? How do we know they didn't do this on purpose just to create the controversy, not to subliminally inject Nazi symbology, but to have a stupid talking point in the news that smears the whole thing. I think there's a lot of things they're doing over there that don't necessarily align with conservative values. Well, that's probably true. This one here, I have, I have my own theory on this, is that probably they did hire somebody. They didn't know what was the guy doing. He was sending a message and setting them up. I have real problems with CPAC. CPAC is a play that pay operation okay you want an award at cpac you want to speak you ante up a lot of money uh, my former group tom fitton and company you know speaks there every year he gets awards look at the 990 see how much money that they have given cpac and that's true for most of the speakers now sometimes people get on there on the basis of quote merit i used to speak there before matt schlapp was the the head of it uh schlapp is, is a sleazy lobbyist uh, you know, and, and that's generally speaking, who runs CPAC? It's a lobbying organ. You know, it's run by lobbyists, and, and they create these relationships with these politicians, and then they sell those relationships to make money in their own lobbying practice. Remember that CPAC and Schlapp were against Trump in 2016 until it looked like he was going to win the primary. They were supporting the idiot Ted Cruz, who just went to Mexico as his people were dying. <laughs> In Texas, okay, who's who's done? He's 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 stick a fork in him too with the rest of the Republicans, and that's who these people are. And and this is a way of doing business in Washington. This is why it's so corrupt. It's why it's inherently corrupt because people cozy up to these politicians. They sell the influence, and frankly, it's not that much different than what Hunter Biden and Joe Biden did with regard to the Chinese, and the Ukrainians, and the Russians. This is what it's about. And the money flows. And you get these people there with little expertise. You know, they're they're slick. You know, they know how to sliver around Washington like snakes and, and maneuver. I mean, Mitch McConnell, of course, is, you know, one of the pe people whose influence they try to sell, that kind of thing. And this, in effect, is, is Washington, D.C. So I would say that Matt Schlapp is the flip side of Joe Biden in that regard. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an influence for sale operation. That's quite clear. And, uh, you know, it's Charles and I are really focusing on how these tax exempt corporations are uh, basically taking advantage of every taxpayer. You know, their activities are subsidized by our tax dollars because they're not paying taxes. And then the guys who run them, the men and women who run them, engage in these private businesses that are substantially enriched. They live these high lifestyles, lots of money, as you said, $750,000. That was Parker Petit who uh, was looking for that uh, pardon. I mean, that is particularly reprehensible that we have this, uh, you know, government by the people, for the people, of the people. But if you can pay, then you can buy a pardon. I mean, the fact that that's oh. allowed, this is something we should discuss oh. at the new Constitutional Congress. 
Yeah, what's what's worse is that he didn't even come through with, you know, with right. hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, I mean, the guy should be sued. Slap should be sued right. for that. I'm sure he must have, well, at least, have given the impression, at least, that he was going to get something for it. Reminds me of years ago. I told you this story yesterday, Jason. I had a client who was importing firearms from Hungary, and uh, he said, "Go see the the ambassador of Hungary because." Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms had uh, prevented further importation of these firearms. He was, from, he was from Pennsylvania, a gun importer. And the ambassador said to me, I was doing international trade at the time, primarily. He said, go hire Henry Kissinger. He'll solve it. So I called up Kissinger Associates. Who was running it? Larry Eagleburger, who later became, I think, Secretary of State as well, later on. And I said, Larry, can you solve this? And he says, oh, it's cake, no problem. I said, how much is it going to take to convince Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms to allow the, the product in? He says, well, $20,000. So my client pays $20,000, and uh, he falls flat on his face. Of course, Kissinger always claimed that he never did lobbying, which they did. And I didn't ever went to lobbyists before, but I figured, okay, I'll try to help uh, this client out. So they pocketed the 20000 I call up Eagleburger. I said, Larry, you told me it was like cake. He says to me, you should be privileged that Mr. Kissinger and I decided to represent you. So well, I'll be privileged when you give the $20,000 back, okay, <laughs> which you better do. I'm, I'm going to sue your, your fat self, okay? So, <laughs> too many Eagleburgers. Too many Eagleburgers. Good, good point. But, you know, this is Washington, you know, and, and – that was part of my evolution when I, you know, seeing these things that went on is what caused me to say, much like President Trump, you know, saw how it went on, that I would become a rebel, that I someday would become a revolutionary because I saw the just the sleaze that was involved, the dishonesty, the the corruption. And, and this is Washington. And that's why I say we need to form a new government and, and, and freeze these people out. And if they want to continue you know, committing crimes against each other or acting dishonestly towards each other, let them stay in Washington. Let them have all the conferences they want, okay? Have them with yourself, okay? We, the American people, are going in a different direction. We need a new political party. We need more than one, okay? We need more than one. We need more than three. We need new political parties. We need to make some changes to our Constitution, reenact it. We need judges who are not put on the bench through political patronage and, frankly, legalize bribery and sometimes actual bribery to become the yes-men of the special interests. We need an electoral system that works that's not rife with fraud, and we need representatives that represent us, not themselves, which is what you see today. And we need a media that allows you to speak freely and openly because we don't have that anymore. That's what we need. And yeah. I say today, as I said to you, Jason, my Hebrew name, I'm a, a Jewish Christian, as you know, I'm Messianic. I said, but I'm very proud of my Jewish heritage, and I consider myself Jewish, as Jesus considered himself Jew, Jewish as well, is that my Hebrew name is Lazar Elia, Lazarus, which is rising from the dead. This country needs to rise from the dead. It is dead right now. And you can look around. We still have enough riches left. You know, you can go to your golf course. You can go play tennis. You can go to your swimming pool. You can go out to eat, you know, if you're lucky enough in a state that allows it. Yeah. But you know what? It's all going to be gone very shortly. And your kids and grandkids are going to be living, in, excuse the French, in S-H-I-T. And, and that's where we are today. Uh, the, the country's gone. Yeah. Larry, I want to remind everybody that if they visit freedomwatchusa.org, not only can they support the work that you and your team are doing this uh this new uh, constitutional Congress that we're planning, but if they give a donation of, what's the amount that gets everybody the free book? You've got so many books you've written. Yeah, $50, and we'll send it to you for free. We you need the money. We're starting our, you're going to be with me doing it, Jason. Our Citizens Grand Jury uh, in mid-March with regard to Joe Biden, we're going to seek his indictment along with his son Hunter and his brother Frank for a massive bribery racketeering enterprise with shaking down communist China, Russia, and Ukraine. We now have a Manchurian candidate in the White House. And, uh, yeah. you know, again, ask yourself this. Look, I'm reading this morning. There's a new variant from Brazil. Okay, there's a variant from South Africa. They don't even know if these vaccines are going to cover that. In fact, many experts say they're, they're not. Okay. And, and 
you know, what have we done about China? What have we done? This administration is going to do nothing. But frankly, what have other conservative groups done? At least we're trying at Freedom Watch with a class action to hold the Chinese accountable for the gross damage that they have done. But is your government representing you with China as this country is being destroyed? And as now they're forcing you to take vaccines that may not even work, uh, notwithstanding side effects and everything else. So on top of everything else, you know, this country's gone through a plague. I mean, it's, it's like it's biblical. Wow. And Speaking of biblical, look at that image of uh, the uh, sugar loaf. This is I forget the Portuguese name of this Cristo, but uh, the statue of Christ with all these antiviral. That's a very bizarre image, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Where did that come from? That's in Brazil. That's in Rio. Yeah. Well, you're right. It's on the top of that mountain sugar loaf in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. Saying Brazil's COVID crisis is a warning to the whole world, scientists say. I'll tell you this, Larry. I think that uh, countries and within the United States, states that defied the original lockdown, this would include Brazil, they're being punished. And, you know, we're hearing about how I, I just, I, it's, it's a terrible situation that I have to be careful what I say, but I don't want to lose this platform because, you know, we've already lost Crowdsource the Truth 2, which was a backup uh, YouTube channel. A lot of people watched on Crowdsource the Truth 2 and we're missing viewers now. People are being unsubscribed from the Jason Goodman channel at the same rate that they're being subscribed to Crowdsource the Truth 3 the new backup channel that I've created. So that doesn't make sense to me. And it really does feel like these big tech companies are targeting those of us who are effective in getting this word out and doing whatever they can to stop it in the same way that they're targeting states and other countries well, that we have need, questioned. We need to man up, Jason, because there need to be wealthy people or we need to raise money to create our own platforms, our own ability to communicate. Uh, we cannot depend on them any longer. And uh, the very fact that you know conservatives are out, out there self-censoring themselves right now, taking off their glasses and stepping on them themselves, tells you that unless something changes quickly, we will be in a total leftist gulag slave takeover. You know, you're right. Uh, and and I would I want to play my part in leading our people to the promised land, and it shouldn't take 40 years if we act now. I mean, mo it took Moses 40 years. Okay. We don't have 40 years. This country won't be around in 40 years. You're absolutely right. You know, one of the problems, Larry, and I agree with you that we do need to do that. But, you know, when you look back at what's gone on, Google and all these other uh, tech giants that have done this, they've essentially used like the heroin dealer business model where they give you the product for free until you're addicted to it. And now we've got everybody on this incredibly robust video server platform YouTube that is so difficult for others to compete with. Every day I get people emailing me saying, oh, you know, you should get onto BitChute. And BitChute is a well-established, fairly robust alternative platform, but just a fraction of the viewers who see us on YouTube and elsewhere visit BitChute. So it's an uphill battle. And, you know, I've been doing my own work to try to create a platform that's somewhat insulated. People who sponsor Crowdsource the Truth on Subscribestar.com slash Crowdsource the Truth or Patreon.com slash Crowdsource the Truth are somewhat insulated from that tech suppression. But now it's becoming even more insidious. Vimeo, the company that I use to serve videos to those platforms, are threatening to throw me off. So I'm having to do more and more things behind the scenes. We're creating our own video server platform, and it's hugely expensive. So, you know, we're, we're rising up to meet the challenge, but it's not easy. No, it's not easy, but we've got to do it, and we can't uh, be afraid. And you create a product, and people are going to come to that product, and they're going to have no other choice but to, to turn to, to other methods of communication. Absolutely. They will have and so, Larry, we're getting ready, you know, uh, as you said, I'm going to be meeting you there to do these citizens grand juries. And, you know, the more you and I have communicated about this, the more I've realized the value of these citizen grand juries, not just in educating the public, the people who participate in the grand juries and the people who view on FreedomWatchUSA.org and on Crowdsource the Truth. But we're generating legal documents that would be impossible to get without somebody with your expertise in organizing these types of things, affidavits, evidence, things that get submitted to other bodies that 
need to act and it's we're advancing this process and um i think it's very important that we continue to do it well we have to do it jason and you know we do have the right okay I, i'm not calling for a violent uh, arrest but we have the right for citizens arrests you know i write about it in my book it takes a revolution forget the scandal industry and it may come to that uh, because we don't have a justice system what did wyatt earp do i've said this before in the old west when they killed all of his brothers. I mean, he, he took care of business, okay? And that was before we had a Justice Department and before we had uh, this kind of a structure, you know, in Washington, D.C. But what do you do when the head of the FBI gives a press conference two days ago, Christopher Wray, and blames everything that happened at the Capitol on white supremacists and white domestic terrorists? The guy's getting down on his knees and... and Again, excuse the French, giving oral to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, okay, because he wants to keep his job, okay? The people that entered that capital, most of them were ordinary Americans. They had had it. Uh, they saw the rank corruption and the straw that broke the camel's back was the election that was procured largely by fraud, in my opinion. Now, I don't attribute it to Jason. I said it, okay? So this is, this is the reason for it. Yeah, there were some bad people on both sides. But it wasn't white domestic supremacists. I'm sorry. And this is where we are today. So yeah. we need our own justice system. We need uh, an FBI that's not being used as a Gestapo by the ultra left to round everybody up that was in Washington. Turn over your cell phones. If you don't do that, we'll slap a warrant on you. If that doesn't work, we may indict you. This guy, Kent uh, Cleet Keller, Olympic gold medal winner, walks into the Capitol and gets charged with seven felonies. He Whoa. 30 years. Mr. A mixture of misdemeanors and felonies. Okay, and this is where it is. It sends a message. This is why people, so-called conservatives, are running for the exits. That's why they become cowards. They will not stand up. What would have happened if our founding fathers, because, you know, King George III, the Revolutionary War began before 1776, Lexington and Concord, New York City. We were fighting the Brits before then. And, you know, the Brits took our legal system away from us, just like we have it taken away from us now, overtaxed us because we had to support the rest of the British colonies on our back. And then, of course, then they went to take away our guns when we started to rise up and fight them. Where are we today? It's the same thing. And it's worse. Because King George III was not a socialist. King George III was not an atheist. King George III was not a communist. He was not a radical black. He was not a radical Muslim. He was not a radical Marxian on the Jewish left. And he was not a radical LGBTQ. I, I'll give me George, King George III any day compared to who now <laughs> is in charge of this country. Let me take you back to this uh, Christopher Ray testimony, Larry, because I think it was really... I mean, it was like bizarro world. He, they totally did not address the Antifa aspect. As a matter of fact, I forget who it was, but one of the guys who was running it said it had nothing to do with Antifa. And I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. I really want to recommend to viewers that they check out Andy No's book, Unmasked. He's talking all about Antifa, and he obviously wrote it before January 6th. We didn't hear anything about this kid, John Earl Ray, and I, I just, this, this capital attack, we can already see it's going the same way so many other massive crimes have gone, where not only is the FBI not investigating it properly, but they seem to be involved in covering it up and pushing a false narrative. And it's all designed to smear Trump, smear Trump supporters, as you said, put the wrong people in jail and let these criminals who Joe Biden says is just an idea and Gerald Nadler says doesn't exist, just set them well, free. You look, at, you look at Ray's demeanor at that press conference. He couldn't look straight into the camera because he knew he was lying. Okay. His eyes were shifting faster than Howdy Doody, you know, when I was a kid. But see, I see, I just don't buy this, that it was, that this was a terrible criminal act, what happened on January 6th. There were a lot of good people there. The police let them in. The police are pissed off, too. The police have been assaulted and killed in the last two years. The military, they don't even trust the military. They think somehow the military is going to rise up and overthrow the government. How do you get into that position? Jefferson predicted it. 
that we'd be here. And Jefferson was not a domestic terrorist. Jefferson was not a white supremacist, contrary to what some people may think, you know, on the radical left. He actually was in, in favor of abolishing slavery. He made, made that clear. He tried to get that in the Declaration of Independence but and the Constitution. But, you know, this was not a massive crime that occurred in Washington, D.C. There were a few bad people on either side. But the majority of the people were people that rose up because they saw their government had become so corrupt, including this guy that you have on the screen right now, that they felt that they had to exercise some kind of protest. And they walked into their Capitol building. It was their Capitol building. I'm sorry. And there are people in the comments right now, Larry, reminding us that Donald Trump appointed Christopher Ray. Why didn't he fire him? He had many opportunities. You and I have done show after show about how obvious it was that William Barr was not going to do anything and, in fact, was running interference for the other side the whole time. I'm not yet convinced that Donald Trump did that on purpose. I think there's a strong possibility that his hands were tied, that he did what he could, and it just wasn't that... Trump you know, sowed the seeds of his own destruction. And, and, and Trump, you know, he can have all the packs he won. He's not coming back. He did a lot of good things. Uh, I tried to be his law firm for four years. I was kept away from him by Roger Stone. Uh, you know, people like that. He took bad advice from establishment Republicans. Look, he, you know, in addition to Sessions, he put in Bill Barr. You know, what a disgrace. In addition to that, he puts in Christopher Ray. In addition to that, he has 300 worthless judges on the bench that you know, or a bunch of, a lot of them are just simply a bunch of political hacks. You know, he doesn't know who he put on the bench. And that was one reason I voted for him and, and, and supported him. But yes, he did many good things. And we have to thank him for that. But, you know, Donald Trump is not God. He, he was not, you know, at the level where he could figure everything out. And maybe if he had another four years, he would have, he would have figured it out. But, you know, he's going to be 78 in 2024, uh, you know, he's going to have to stop eating three and four Big Macs every day if he wants to live. <laughs> in. But, you know, and I wish him well and, and he can be a good voice. But we need someone of the statue of Ron, a stature of Ronald Reagan. We need somebody who has class. We need somebody who can who can relate to more people than just us. OK, and someone who has the strength of a Reagan. OK, in the modern day context. To be like Donald Trump, but to have the class of a Ronald Reagan, that person has yet to emerge. And, and no one is going to be a political messiah. The American people are that person. We are that person. We must rise up ourselves now. It's up to us. Don't look to any one person to do it. And that's why, you know, I've been critical of the cowards that call themselves conservatives, because they're lulling us to sleep. They're getting us to think that in 2024, things will be different. If there's a Republican House of Representatives, no, they will not be different. And they're getting us to think that it will be different if we have a Republican president in 2024. No, it will not be different because the past is a prologue. What have the Republicans done? We're in the, in the situation we are now, largely part, in large part because of them, because they've been cowards. And, and for other reason, they want to make money. They want to jingle the change with the Democrats. You know, we can live a ha happy and fat life in Washington, D.C. The new face of Fox News, as bad as it was, is now Carl Rove, Porky Pig, Carl Rove. That you have to watch every morning. The guy is corrupt to the core. This is the Republican Party. And Larry, do you think that Ron DeSantis would be a good choice for Republicans in 2024? There's a lot of talk that he might be the uh, candidate. Maybe he might. Maybe he might. You know, I mean, unfortunately, the American people... Uh, regrettably, vote for people on the basis of how they look. Okay, on television. Yeah, Ron does not give a presidential uh, image. You know, it, it's just. But I mean, I think maybe maybe he is. Who knows? We'll invite him to our convention. I think he's doing a good job in Florida. I do. And and he know. seems more like a regular guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He seems like he's very well centered. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see uh, where where that goes. Um, you know, uh, it's it's troubling, Larry. I know our viewers are, uh, everybody shares your feelings. I know, I know people are going to visit freedomwatchusa.org, check out the cases that you're bringing. Everybody's really interested to see what's going to happen in this uh, lawsuit that you brought on behalf of Laura Loomer and what's happening with the lawsuits against China. 
Well, we've, China's evading service of process. So as we speak, uh, we're serving them, unfortunately, through the State Department, which costs us a lot of money. So feel free to contribute to Freedom Watch. But, uh, you know, we tried to serve them twice. They won't accept uh, when the, the clerk of the court sent it to them. And they're flouting our legal system. They have no respect. Uh, they laugh at us, the communist Chinese, that we're a bunch of... Maybe they'll and get Trump it right if, if you send it, to, send it to Hunter Biden. They should get it that way. Email yeah, that's true. Oh, they're going to—they're getting served. <laughs> okay, now, now we're going through the State Department, right? So we'll see if if the Biden State Department does what it's supposed to do, and send yeah. it to them. Well, you know, we're we're running out of time here, Larry. We've covered a lot of ground today. Anything else you wanted to get to? No, I just want to reiterate, Jason, that now is not the time for sunshine, sunshine soldiers and summer patriots. Is that we, the American people, need to be brave. We need to risk all. Our founding fathers did that. They pledged their fortune and their sacred honor and risked their lives and gave their lives to form a new nation. And we cannot be afraid to speak our mind, but we must also act. And acting is important. And that's why I want people to read the book, my book, It Takes a Revolution, because I have certain action plans on what we can do. If that does not work, I don't want to see violence I don't want to see a bloody revolution. I'm trying to prevent it. But if we do not succeed, that surely will come to pass, as Thomas Jefferson predicted it would. We almost saw it on uh, January 6th. So, I mean, it's not like you're inciting, although you someone saw, will blame you of that. You saw the beginning of it. You saw a miniature storming of the Bastille. And, you know, there's you know, one person out there, I won't name names, uh, who is with a certain publication who told me that he was against the French Revolution. I mean, my God, Jefferson was an architect of the French Revolution. The French, we know what their situation was. They had no choice to do what they did and overthrow Marie Antoinette and King Louis the Fifteenth. And I don't want to see it come to that in this country, but we're getting dangerously close. Yeah. Well, Larry, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. And uh, I, you know, we're going to continue to look into all of this stuff everything that's going on with the lobbyists that are uh, posing as conservatives, the cowards in Congress who are giving everybody false hope and seem to speak out of both sides of their mouth. I do want to remind people to visit freedomwatchusa.org. Larry and I will be uh, getting together very soon to do this, uh, the second in a series of Citizens Grand Juries. And uh, if people are enjoying the show and want to sponsor Crowdsource the Truth, I do encourage people to visit patreon.com slash crowdsource the truth or subscribestar.com slash crowdsource the truth. And uh, thanks to all the sponsors that make this show possible. Larry, huge thank you to you. We'll be back really soon. Thanks for I'm watching, Larry, everybody. In addition to buy my book, go out and buy as many books of Dr. Seuss as you can before they become extinct. That's Try a good idea. And also Curious George, buy him too, because monkeys are <laughs> going to be banned shortly. <laughs> Everything's going to be banned.